Good evening, everyone. Hi, my name's Arshil Arthi. It is Sunday, the Saturday, uh, sorry, Sunday, the 27th of uh, January 2019. And if I haven't spoken to you before, uh, I want to say Happy New Year. Tonight, I'm very excited about tonight's session uh, because it's something that I actually did last year and it was a huge success. So I launched a program called 30 Deals in 30 Days. Uh, and that is pretty much how to find 30 property deals and how to source package and sell 30 deals within 30 days. Now, it seems like a massive challenge, but with the help of you and with the help of me and collectively, it is very, very doable. Now, uh, we're gonna go through uh, quite a few different scenarios tonight. So we're gonna look at pr different property types and as a result, we're gonna see what works, what doesn't work. And then if you've got any questions in the meanwhile, feel free to ask away because this is your session. So for the guys on the webinar, I just want you to, if you can, quickly say a quick hello. Let me know that you can hear me nice and loud and clearly. That'd be fantastic. Uh, if you've got any questions, so P uh, Pietra says hi. So hi, hi, Ricky. So we've got lots of people logged in, ready to take a, well, in essence, taking some fantastic value that we're going to be offering tonight. So um, I want to say, first of all, thank you so much for trusting me with your time this evening. Now, the reason why I say that, because it is a Sunday evening, you could be doing plenty of other things, but you're spending your time with me, and I appreciate that time is a precious commodity. Guarantee that this is going to be the best 30 minutes, uh, best 90 minutes that you'll invest in yourself. So, okay, so let's get moving on. So in just... In around 90 minutes, what you're going to know is we're going to figure out what the simple three-step system is to deal trading success. Uh, we're going to be looking at the fastest way to make property cash flow. We're going to be looking at what the actual challenge is. What is 30 deals in 30 days? We're going to be looking at the kind of deals that we should be looking at and the deals that we traded in 2018. And then finally, we're going to be showing you how to get started in property with no money and no experience now that's quite a few claims there you know and i I've, i'm not ashamed to say any of those because some of the people that we're going to introduce you to along the journey tonight have done exactly that so let's get moving on so why should you listen to me so first of all who is Art Shilahi? well first of all i'm a best-selling author of a book called boom, bust them back again. And if you haven't read it, yeah, I strongly urge that you do. It's what I would call the Property Investor Survival Guide. Uh, I wrote that in, ooh, it's, I think it's 2015, and it's been an Amazon bestseller ever since. So if you haven't read it, feel free to go over to Amazon and uh, download the book. Or just so that you know, all the proceeds from the, uh, the book actually go to charity, so you'll be doing your bit for charity too. So I'm a monthly columnist of a magazine called, well, two very, uh, two very well-known magazines called Your Property Network and HMO Magazine. If you haven't heard about those, I strongly urge that you uh, do a bit of Google research and find out what they're all about. So I am a property veteran. Now, the reason why I say that, I'm 38 years old. Uh, yeah, I am 38. And I've survived the brink and bust of recession. So not many people, well, property investors, uh, sometimes you'll see the elder property investors saying that they've seen recession and they've survived the brinks and bust, uh, brinks of bust and recession. Now, 38 years old, I've seen quite a bit in property. So I started deal trading uh, business. Uh, I call it on a shoestring budget because we literally started with nothing back in the year 2000. I've made multi-million pounds worth profit in a very short space of time. And what I'm going to be showing is that you guys can do this too. So, and then finally, I'm a property investment trainer and a mentor that has helped hundreds of people achieve financial freedom. The one thing that I want to suggest first and foremost is that, uh, and I'm very clear on this, is that um, first and foremost, I am a property investor. And the reason why I say that is very simple. It's because you get some people that go on workshops and, you know, I'm not slacking or anything like that, but they go on a workshop and then all of a sudden they become a property trainer or they all, all of a sudden become a property professional. However, have you've got a question, have they really earned their scars? So have they been through the recession? Have they, have they seen the brink of bust? Have they nearly gone bust? Have they gone off and done multiple deals? Or is it just one HMO that they purchased? Is it just that one deal that they've traded? Now, just so you know, I am a property investor. 
uh, and I've got quite an extensive portfolio. Now, in 2017 alone, I purchased 50, 50 properties, so that's five zero properties. In 2018, I went on to purchase another 20 uh, properties, uh, another 20 properties. So straight away, you know, I've got the best, well in excess of 100 odd properties. So, so but in, in comparison, that may be small. I've got the best part of 1,100 odd tenants. So we've got we've got a decent sized portfolio. So let's keep moving on. But like I, I wanted to mention, first and foremost, I am a property investor. I'm out here doing it day in, day out. And, you know, as a result, everything that I talk about is the stuff that I've personally gone through. So hopefully you'll be able to draw off my experience. So one thing that I want to talk about to start with is that have you set or have you set your goals for 2019? Have you set your property goals? I don't want to know, well, when, when we talk about goals, there are personal goals and there's also business goals. What's your business goals? So are your business goals that you want to quit your job? So there's nothing wrong with being in employment. And if you are and you enjoy it, fantastic. If you are and you want to make a better life for yourself, now could be the opportunity. So some of the goals that you've created to quit your job, could it be that you want to make property pay for some luxuries such as cars, holidays, clothes, and you know, there's nothing wrong. I know lots of people talk that you shouldn't really mention materialistic items and stuff like that, but sometimes that can be an anchor to show levels of success for yourself, not for the public, you know, I'm not saying that you've got to go out and buy a brand new car there all of a sudden and splash it on Facebook and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying is that sometimes for your own personal being, it's good to sometimes have anchors or goals to set, uh, to set for and to create targets. So it could be that you want to get your kids onto a property ladder. It could be that you want to get your kids through university. It could be that you want to get uh, you know, some of your kids married. The list could go on. You know, These are all very personal to you. And um, one thing I always say is that create yourself a list, create yourself some targets, and then as a result, let's see what you can do to get moving forward. Now, uh, at the start of the year, I created some targets. So uh, one of my targets is that I'm about to launch a new business and as a result, I've created multiple mini targets. So let's just say that one action has almost like five or six mini actions as a result to get to that action. So let's just say that I'm buying a building and I want to turn it into six flats. One of those targets would then be to instruct an architect. One of them would be to submit a planning application, get builders quotes, get materials quotes, blah, 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 blah. So you can see how we work. So with deal trading, there is, no, there is no difference because or creating goals for your personal financial freedom, it is no different. So you can say, well, in actual fact, I want £5,000 a month, I want £10,000 a month income. But what do you have to do to get to that £5,000 or £10,000 a month income? You've got to break it down into bite-sized bullet points so that you can see where you are and where you're achieving or where you're falling off target. So that's going to help you. So and one of the questions I ask is, what is the strategy that you're going to use to get to that? So, you know, there's lots of strategies in property. Let's look through some of them. There's rent to rent, there's HMOs, there's service accommodation, there's developments, there's commercial to residential, there's buy, uh, single buy to lets, uh, there's lease options, you, you name it. There's so many different angles for you to thrive in property, but you've got to choose which one's the one for you because you've got to have a look at you and your personality. You've also got to look at your resources to see what's going to get you there. You know, there's no point saying that I'm going to build a massive portfolio, but unfortunately at the moment you don't have the, uh, the resources to do that in terms of, you know, a, a simple deposit for the first property. So you can put yourself up against it. So tonight's session is actually very current. So let's get some of the things, let's get some of the quotes out of the way. And I hear these all the time. Deals do not exist in my area. No one will sell me their property below market value. Why would someone give me their property for me to make all the cash flow? What's in it for me? And it doesn't make sense. So just out of curiosity, if you're watching this on whether you're on the webinar, whether you're on uh, Instagram, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on YouTube, feel free, you know, have you heard these questions or have you actually asked yourself these questions? You know, people come up to me and say, oh, okay, I'm in London. And London's a, a massive area. And people say to me, oh, deals do not exist in London. And you know what I say to them? You're just not looking hard enough because I seem to find them and I'm based in Wolverhampton. 
I'm not even based in your area and I'm still finding deals in your area. Now, admittedly, that must make you feel pretty damn crap about yourself because in the same respect, someone from out of the area is finding deals in your patch. But what I want to do is get you guys finding deals in your area so that you can start saying, you know what, I'm in London, I can get properties 20% below market value. And now one of the ladies that I'm going to introduce you to a little later on, She's completely, well, when I say completely new to property, she's got a bit of background in, in developments and stuff like that. But all of a sudden, because I've been working with her for the last week, she went off and found a property 20% below market value in London. Now, people say that that is unheard of. People say that you can't get deals in London below market value. People say it's the toughest market. People say that it's a thriving market. People say that uh, for every property that comes on, they've got five or six offers. How did we manage to get a property below market value in London? Tonight, we're going to dispel, uh, dispel all these myths. So let's keep moving on. The one thing that I want to talk about very briefly is beliefs and actions. Our beliefs shape our actions. If we believe it's impossible to find deals, then we're likely to act in a way that confirms this. Does that make sense? If you think that deals do not exist in London, guess what? you're not going to find a deal in London. If we believe it's possible to find deals, then our actions will prove we can. And tonight I'm going to prove to you that you can find deals direct to owners in any town from the comfort of your sofa. So just out of curiosity, if you're watching on all the platforms, you know, are, are you in the right place? Are you in the are you in the right frame of mind? If you can give me a quick yes, a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever it may be on Instagram, a bit of a heart, whatever it may be, just give me a quick thumbs up, thumbs down, a yes, a, this is a you know I'm in the right place, a, you know this is at the right time for me, whatever you want to say. Let's let's get you guys. Okay, so the guys on the webinar, they're definitely up for it. They're going, yes, 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 hell yes, hell yes, yep, 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 yep. Okay, so brilliant. We've got everyone. Okay, so everyone's. Everyone's in the right space. Everyone's on the on in the right frame of mind. Now, when it comes to taking action, it's only action that will transform the quality of your life. Don't let a fear of failure or a fear of success stop you from grabbing the success that you deserve. Now, I'm a firm believer of this. Now, just uh, just so you know, lots of people will not achieve their goals as a result of fear of failure. They're too worried about failing. They're not actually worried about getting started. They're actually worried about failing. I'm not sure if I do this, whether it's gonna work for me or not. Now, we're gonna, you know, everyone has a fear of failure, but what we have to do is calculate, what we have to do is calculate what actually could, what's the worst thing that could happen to us. Now, one of the beautiful things about deal sourcing and deal trading is that, and I say this very clearly, is that we are we have no risk, which means that we are open to endless opportunities. So let's keep moving forward. So what is your why? What is your why? And uh, now, if you're watching on the webinar, you'll see a picture of me and my wife and my two children. That is my why. That's the reason why I get out of bed every day. That's the reason why I still keep pushing Harder and harder. Now, people keep saying to me, Ash, okay, you're financially free. Why are you still working so hard? When you say working, why do you keep pushing so hard? Shouldn't you just be relaxing? Now, and I say, yes, I could very easily stop working and I don't need to worry about a thing for the rest of my life. However, that doesn't thrive. That That's not me. I like creating things. I like creating new businesses. I like creating new challenges for myself. And as a result, that's what keeps life interesting. So I've got two very young daughters, and everyone will know this. It's very well documented that my daughters are five and three years old. Now, I want to create something that will leave a legacy, not for me, but for them. So as a result, I'm building on something at the moment so that these two little girls won't have to worry. I don't have to worry about anything anyway. But I want to make sure that these two little girls have the life that I could have only dreamt of as a child. So hopefully that that's, gives you a bit of an indication. Now, my question is, how badly do you want it? Now, if you're watching again, off, uh, apologies if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on Instagram or YouTube, you can't see my screen right now, but how badly do you want it? You know, if you set yourself a challenge, if you set yourself a goal, how badly do you want to do that? Now, I'll give you an example. Now, in April 2018, I set, well, tell you what, 
at the start of 2018, I entered the London Marathon. And little did I know, first time I ever applied, and I actually got in on a ballot, which is very rare. I've known people that have been trying to get in for eight to 10 years on a ballot, I've never got through. So first time of joining, uh, I got straight in on a ballot. Some people call me lucky. And as a result, I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna give it my best shot because you know I've been given this great opportunity. So I did the London Marathon, the hottest marathon on record, and as a result, completed it. But in order for me to get there, to, to run 26.2 miles, and just for the guys out watching the webinar, and uh, you can see that I'm actually wearing my London Marathon jumper. It just happened to be by coincidence. Um, in order for me to complete or to complete the challenge to run 26.2 miles, I had to actually train for and run over a thousand miles of training to reach that pinnacle point of success. So the point that I'm trying to make is that in order to get good at something, there has to be some practice. There has to be, we have to keep pushing on. We have to keep making sure that we're training. We keep making sure that we're repeating what we learned. And as a result, the results will come. Does that kind of make sense? You know, if I'm talking rubbish, feel free. Feel free to um, shut me down. Now, it doesn't stop there because once I completed the London Marathon, I thought, okay, London Marathon, tick. Next thing that I did, I actually run a few more half marathons and I ran the Snowdonia Marathon. Snowdonia Marathon, is, believe it or not, it's all uphill. So as a result, I put myself through these mental uh, challenges. And it doesn't stop there. So 2019 looks a little bit interesting because I'm, I'm, I'm entering the Ironman in Bolton. Now, if you're watching my screen, that I'm in Bolton, it's 2.4 mile open water swim, 112 mile bike ride, followed by 26.2 mile run, all in one day. And the reason why I do this is not because I'm stupid, it's because I thrive off the challenge. And the more importantly, the one thing that I thrive off is the fact that I can, can, can when I say this, is that I like to think that I've got complete control over mind over matter. Does that make sense? Your body can stand almost anything. It's your mind that you have to convince. Does that make sense? You know, and that's something that you've really, um, that's something that you've really got to get on board in business, in property, in fitness. Your body can stand almost anything. It's the mind that you have to convince. So as a result, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the Ironman event is just an event. What I have to make sure is that I've got this in check so that when I turn up on the day, my body does the rest of the work. If I switch this off and say, I'm getting round, that's exactly what my body's going to do. It's going to get me around. So, so that's a bit of mindset for you, you know, and that's how I'm built. I'm built with a very positive mindset. If I say that I'm going to do something, I'm going to complete it. Yeah, regardless what it is. So let's keep moving on. Let's get to the property now. So who likes a challenge? Now, this is where we're talking about 30 deals in 30 days. And if you're watching, we're gonna we're actually gonna close the live stream in a second. So if you want to watch the whole session, uh there's a link on all the on all the posts, and it is bit.ly forward slash 30 deals in 30 days. And if you want to watch the whole session, now's your opportunity probably to log on so that you can see what we're doing, how we're doing it, and how we're going to get moving forward. So, guys, on that note, I wish everyone that's on the Instagram, the YouTube, and the Facebook feed a lovely evening. And hopefully, I look forward to speaking to you on the session. So, guys, bear with me. Right, boom. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much for that, guys. So uh, we're we're now predominantly uh, only on the uh, webinar. So thank you for staying with me. So we're going to go straight into thirty deals in thirty days. So what is thirty deals in thirty days? Now, just uh, just out of curiosity, is there anyone on the webinar that straight away is scared of doing thirty deals in such a small space of time, or does it actually excite you? You know, by all means. Feel free to feel free to answer the question. You know, 
never okay so ricky straight away he goes straight away uh emmanuel says yes i'll be honest and you know what emmanuel that's great because you know it scares it scares some people it will scare people intrigued and ready for the challenge excited a bit of both it's exciting i'm excited to do it so what we're after what well what we're after how to do deals, how to deal source and deal trade, deal package, how to source, package and uh, trade. I call it source, package and sell, SPS. And as a result, those deals in, get them in the bag. And as a result, it's going to, uh, so sorry, I'm just uh, checking out. So some people, uh, okay, so Gloria, Gloria's on the line. Okay, so it's a Jade, Okay, so Jade says my sound, and uh, Jade and Chris both said um, the sound is gone. Can everyone else hear me clearly? Uh, clearly, and uh, if you could let me know that you can hear me not nice and loud and clearly, that'd be fantastic. Okay, great challenge. Can't wait for it. So Peter says fantastic. Okay, so what is 30 deals in 30 days? Now, what every February, what I try and do, I set up the Elite Property Tribe with uh, people who are who want to become deal traders and deal packages and as a result get them to do deals within the first 30 days now just so you know some of the people that join the elite property tribe have already started now uh, there's a couple of people that have got two maybe uh, there's definitely a couple of people that have got two deals there's some people that have got one deal there's some people that are working through it so i'm going to go through so what they what it actually entails and how they've done it in great deal, a great deal throughout this presentation. So let's start from, from the beginning. Why is being a property sourcer such an important skill to have? Now, you guys have got to relate to this in your, in your property journey. Um, and the reason why I say this is because when you, when you see my emails come to you i'm assuming that everyone on this session sees my emails on a pretty much on a day to a by a day by day basis and um, yeah i don't apologize i do not apologize about the level or the amount of emails that we send and the reason why we do that is because we send some fantastic deals now, how else would a property investor, so let's just say I've got Martin Knowles online. So let's just imagine Martin Knowles is in London. How else, unless he's actively looking in Manchester, would he know to hear about the great deal in Manchester? How else would agents be able to sell their hard to sell properties? And the reason why I say that is because homeowners do not take calculated risks. They want something as simple and as safe as possible. If just imagine you as a homeowner. If an estate agent called you, you said, "Hi, Mister. Let's let's just pick on uh, Chris Lar uh, Larby." So, hi, Chris Larby. I've just had a fantastic property in. Chris is now looking to buy a property for him and his family to move in. Chris, just so that you know, um, it's a fantastic property at a fantastic price, but it's got a massive crack running out of the back of the building. Are you still interested? Now, Chris, as a family man. Is looking for a property to move into. The last thing you want to do is take a property on that may not be structural, uh, may not be structurally sound or mortgageable. And as a result, he'll think, well, in actual fact, I'm looking for something for my family to live in for their security. Last thing I want to do is put something in and something goes wrong. So investors take calculated risks. As a result, they will they will pitch their price accordingly. Does that make sense? Unlike home own, home owners. Who are simply after somewhere to live. More importantly, how would distressed sellers be able to find and uh, solve their problems without problem solvers like us? So we run a critical. A lot. Of, a lot of people are saying that sound keeps cutting in and out. If you can let me know, that'd be fantastic. So how else would distressed sellers uh, be able to sell, solve their problems without problem solvers like us? Just so that you know, we are a critical point in pretty much all property investors' chains. For property investors, auction houses, uh, estate agents, letting agents, 
etc etc we keep we keep pretty much the property industry moving as well does that make sense now the reason why i like deal trading is because we can trade from anywhere in the world and i'm going to give you an example of that in a short while so uh, one of the guys that i'm going to be introducing you to he actually trades from the other side of the world he trades uk property from the other side of the world the reason why i like it is because there is no commitment, there is no, uh, there is no loans, there is no solicitors. Uh, sorry, I was just checking to see if we had a slide come up there. So we're gonna talk about loans, deposits, solicitors, and how, why, there is none of that when it comes to deal trading, because all we are simply doing is negotiating a deal and passing it onto an investor for them to deal with. We're not promising the earth, we're not saying that we're cash buyers, we're not saying that we're the buyer. We're not saying that we're going to be the person buying the property or we're going to complete within 28 days and we're not putting ourselves under any pressure. And that's the reason why I like deal trading. I like deal trading because I can also start and stop whenever I want it to happen. So just imagine that I want to go on holiday on the 1st of February. Guess what? I don't make any calls on the 1st of February, which means that no deals come in, which means that I don't sell them. I may have some stuff that is still carrying on in the background, stuff that's looking to complete, but as a result, I decide when I start and stop, and that's the reason why I love deal trading. Now, where do you fish? Now, the reason why I say this, and I used this slide a couple of days back, is that where do you fish? Do you fish in the local pond where you're limited with your opportunities? So let's just say, for argument, say you, you fish in a small town in Wales, uh, which is limited with its opportunities, or do you fish nationwide and you go out to the whole sea and as a result, uh, as a result, watch all the opportunities come in nationwide and go from there. Now, some people said to me that maybe I should use my program as almost like a franchise model. And I said, no, I simply said no, because when I then create a franchise model, guess what? We then start looking back at fishing only in our pond. With a franchise model, you can only work within your certain area. That's not what I want to do. I want to give everyone the opportunity to go out and fish out in the sea. Does that make sense? So why trade deals? As a deal trader, it allows you to see the best deals first. Now, remember back in 2017, I bought 50 properties. Now, I saw those and I was director owner on all of them. And they didn't go to market. And as a result, as a, as a being a deal trader, a deal source, a deal packager, whatever you want to call yourself, because believe it or not, they are all the same. Uh, they all mean the same, all mean the same thing, and they all point to the fact that you are literally trading a deal or you are packaging or sourcing the property directly from the owner or the agent. So as a result, I saw those 50 properties and anything, you know, you may look at it and think, well, in actual fact, if I start deal trading. If there's stuff that I see and I like, I will buy first. Now, um, just so you know, at the point of doing this webinar, I've actually just only this list week decided to take on a lease option in Cornwall. And the reason why I'm taking that on is it's out of my area, but I'm going to keep it as a second home or as a holiday home so that me and my family can go and enjoy it. And in the meanwhile, I'll then use it as a holiday home and let it out on Airbnb so that the times that I'm not there, it will generate income. The times that I am there, it's a home for me and my family. And as a result, that will become a free second home. So I thought I'd throw that in there because that's what, that's what I find. Um, okay, so some questions are coming in. So there's some questions, don't worry guys, uh, I will, I will get through all of them um, and it gets me to see all the deals first if I like it I'll buy it or I'll keep it or I'll create a solution where it allows me to acquire it with none of my own money if I don't like it I'll think okay uh, okay it's not for me but it doesn't mean that it's not for someone else now just so you know deal traders don't need any money to get started just lots of determination when I say you don't need any money to get started I mean to buy properties because we're not buying properties you may need a little bit of money to set up um, set up with compliance and there's a few compliance rules that we're going to go through but on average compliance will cost you the best part of 
Um, I haven't got for a best part of if you do all the insurances, etc. Best part of seven hundred pounds, eight hundred and forty. I think mine cost, but I've got quite a high level of insurance. There is no risk because you're not buying anything unless you want to buy it yourself personally, and you can get fast results and it's easy and quick to scale. You can do as many deals or as little deals as you want. All you need to know is how to start speaking to the vendor, where to find the vendor, how to speak to him, and how to create the solution. And when I say you can make holiday sized bundles of cash from hobby amounts of time, it doesn't take a lot of time to do a deal. Just so that you know, on one of the webinars that I did last Monday with my training group, I actually spoke to a landlord directly live on the webinar. As a result, we did a deal on the webinar. I packaged it up on Tuesday. We had a deal agreed on Wednesday. And that's how quick it can happen. And you can generate circa average deal is between three and five thousand pounds, which is the same kind of amount of money that you require if you were to go on holiday. It's the fastest way to reach your property cash flow goals. Now I know that there's lots of people that use deal sourcing as a secondary method to their property journey. So all the cash flow that they generate from deal sourcing, they then use that to purchase additional properties for their portfolio. So they use a sh so they use the dual deal sourcing as a short term goal to achieve their medium and long term goal of owning portfolios for their families. Does that kind of make sense? So keep moving on. So you don't need any money to get started because you're not paying for deposits for properties because you're not buying them unless you want to buy them, of course. You're not paying for solicitors. You're not paying for surveyors. You're not paying for any reverbs. Believe it or not, a lot of the sourcing techniques are completely free. You don't need to spend money, hundreds of that, or, you know, hundreds of pounds on getting 10,000 leaflets out there and uh, direct marketing methods like that. There are lots of sourcing techniques that are completely free, and I'll be showing you how to do those. So I always ask this question, and by all means, I'm going to ask you to fill this question in now. What is, I want you to answer this question. What is your idea of a deal? Now, by all means, you, know, you may say something that is below market value. You may sort of say something that generates some income. You may say something that we can add value to. Feel free to ask the question, what is your idea of a deal? Okay, so there's lots of questions coming in. Um, okay, so okay, so Bob straight away says uh, his idea of a deal is a win-win-win situation. Okay, Chris has said it's a bit uh, something that's below market value. Rado says so, uh, something that gives me an instant cash flow. Uh, Christina says any deal that de uh, derates uh, creates a beneficial profit for an investor and my fee. Kadam says something that solves a problem for the vendor and the investor. Anything from a rent to rent to BNB and brings in a profit. Okay, so we've got lots and lots and lots of answers. Um, okay, so Julian has said, I want something 25 to 30% below market value or 20% ROI. Okay, so everyone's got their own version of what a deal is, and that was what I was trying to get to. There's no right or wrong answer as to what is a deal. Does that make sense? Because what may be a deal for you may not be a deal for someone else. And what may be a deal for them may not be a deal for you. So is it something, buying something below market value, is it buying a property in need of renovation? Is it something that is already income producing? Is it something producing a good ROI, a return on investment? Is it something with good potential of capital growth? Is it something sustainable? Is it something to acquire with no money down? Is it a rent to rent? Is it a lease option? Is it service accommodation? Is it commercial to residential? Is it development opportunities? Do you see what I'm getting at here? There is no right or wrong because let's say Lisa will want something below market value. Lita will want something income producing. Uh, Harjinder will want something with a good ROI. Kadam will want something with capital growth. And all we do is, and I say this, we go fishing and instead of looking to choose one, we look for them all. 
Now, does that scare anyone, by the way? Uh, does that scare anyone? Okay, so Andy says it's relative depending on strategy. And the reason being, uh, Rado said it's a great idea because you've got to remember when you're, it's like just the way that I put this across is that it's just imagine Asda. They opened and they only sold beans. Now, if I wanted spaghetti and I went to Asda, it would pretty much be useless because they only sell beans. Now, if you're a sourcer or a packager or a trader, whatever you want to call yourself, and you only source below market value opportunities, you're missing out on all the people that don't have deposits or uh, want to take on rent to rent. You're missing out all the other people that want to do renovations. You're missing out on all the other people. So do not fall into the trap of being a one trick pony. And I say this all the time. You know, I'm, I'm famous. I'm famous for literally going against the grain, going, going against the grain. People say only stick to one strategy and do it, do it really well. I'm thinking, well, hang on, that means that you're fishing in a pond. Why don't we get fishing out in the sea? Uh, Bob says it's logical to monetize whatever deal comes our way. Absolutely. So, uh, okay, so Martin says, okay, so how do you structure a deal when you're dealing? Okay, we'll go through that. Don't panic. We've got a lot, we've got a lot of time on our hands tonight, guys, so don't panic. So remember, the, uh, the simple process is very simple. It's sources. It's, package and sell source the deal package the deal and sell the deal and it really is that simple now this is where we hit the main part this is a q a session this is where you can ask me anything that you want to know so okay so let's go straight to the back of the question so hi hi uh from hastings Arsh. okay i came to see you one of your presentations okay brilliant so that's not uh hi julian thanks for being online okay so do you need to be fully compliant to operate as a deal sourcer yes you do martin just so that you know, yes, you do. So you've got to be, uh, you've got to be registered with the anti-money laundering uh, regulation (AMLR). Uh, that costs, I think, two hundred and forty pounds off memory. Two hundred and forty pounds for the year. You've got to be a member of the ICO Information Commission's officer. So that costs off memory again, uh, eighty pounds. You've got to be a member of either the TPO, the Property Ombudsman, or the PRS, which is the Property Redress Scheme, which costs on average around ninety pounds. So we've got four, uh, 480 plus 90 and 90, so 480, 186, um, 56, uh, 660. And then on top of that, you've got to get some form of uh, public and uh, public um, and indemnity insurance policy. Sorry, I always get, uh, I always forget what they're called. And so that, that on average costs around 200 pounds a year. So for the best part, 800 pounds a year, you're going to have all the policies required for you to start um, to start deal sourcing. Uh, on top of that, you may want, and I say you may, it's not critical that you do, but you may want also a website so that you can direct people to. So when you're speaking to, let's say, vendors, you're speaking to an estate agent, you go, okay, this is who I am, and as a result, feel free to have a look at my website. Uh, believe it or not, I direct. I always direct them to my Arshilahi website as opposed to my other company websites, uh, and they seem to be rather impressed with that. So, you know, a website, a, 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 a template website will cost you the best part of 50 quid if you're doing it on the cheap. It could cost you 200 pounds, depending on how nice you want to make it. So that's that's the first question answered. We've got loads of questions to get through. Uh, okay, interesting. Right, let's start. Uh, okay, so Harajinder says, can you package deals if you have no experience in them? Absolutely. Even if you've never done a lease option. Absolutely. You know, remember, you're not you're not taking the property on. Uh, the, the beautiful thing, Harajinder, is that with deal sourcing, you can look at all kinds of property because if you're looking at it from the properties that you would only be wanting, again, you fall down the trap of becoming the one trick pony. Now, I look at rent to rent, I look at lease options, I look at delay exchange and delay completions, I look at 
um, oh bloody heck, okay. It's a question of what do not what do I not look at? So I look at rent to rent service accommodation, I look at lease options, I look at exchange delay completions, I look at auctions, letting agents, estate agents, I look at below market value opportunities, I look at commercial to residential, I look at um, actual commercial properties, I look at uh, I could name pretty much all of them out there. And the reason the reason why I say that is because I can look at all of them and I can appraise them in pretty much all the same way. The appraisal is very simple. It's a question of what is it now? What could it become in the future? Or what is it that how you think you can add the value? And as a result, uh, as a result there, how can someone, so you've got to think about it from a point of view is that if you were to buy the property, how would you add the value? And more importantly, as a result of that, do you still see it? see it as being a good deal so there's loads of questions there's loads and loads of questions that you know you can ask and you can appraise a pro uh, you can appraise a property and believe it or not the appraisal of a property shouldn't take you any longer and i say this to to start with it may take you a couple of hours to appraise a property i was with one of my mentees on i think it was last thursday and he spent the best part of half a day appraising the property. And that's fine to start with, but you want to get to a point where it's taking you an average between 15 to 20 minutes to appraise the property. After that, you should be looking at what is it now? What can it become? How will we get there? Can we show some comparables as a result of that? And how can we move forward? And as a result, within 15 to 20 minutes, you can say, okay, yes, I understand the vision. I understand where we are now. I understand how we can add value. And as a result, yes, it is worth X amount of pounds and let's sell it. Does that make sense? Okay, so Julian says, how do you prefer the, how do you prepare the investor pack? What do you put in it? Okay, if you're looking at a property to convert it into a HMO and an article four area to source to an investor, do you talk to the HMO officer to get an idea of whether planning will be granted on the property or ask planning. Bloody heck, okay, this is a long question. Flaming heck, it's, it's an essay. Uh, they now charge pre-planning fees. I don't want to waste a lot of money on pre-planning. Uh, I don't want to waste their time trying to get planning on a property and no chance of getting it. Therefore, okay, Julian, bloody heck, that's a long question. Julian, do not overthink it. You've already overthought it. Hastings is an Article 4 area. Now, guess what, guys? If it's an Article 4 area, yes, you can do subject to planning deals and you structure the deal as a subject to planning so that everyone knows that the deal will only go through if it is subject to planning. The other option that you can do is go for ready made HMOs, which are already being sold. Now, there are loads out there in every Article 4 area. Uh, just so you know, on one of the webinars that I did with my mentee group last Monday, we actually started looking at Milton Keynes, which is notorious for Article 4 property, uh, Article 4 area, as an Article 4 area. As a result, we started looking at approaching landlords that had uh, HMOs in that area. And as a result, we've potentially got a deal that's coming out of the pipe there. Okay, Jade's asked a really important question. Uh, and Annie has asked an important question. I think this is going to be quite a popular question. So let's deal with Annie Ann. Okay, so uh, Annie Ann, okay, so do you need to view a property before you can package and pass it on? Absolutely not. You don't need to. You know, it depends if you, um, did anyone see the deal that came out in Burnley, I think on Friday? Uh, it was a four bed HMO that we put out in Burnley. Now, just so you know, that's my deal. Uh, and as a result, I have not personally been to that, and I actually got the vendor to do uh, to send me all the uh, to send me all the deal, uh, send me all the photos, and as a result, we also put in there if we sometimes view or not view the property. If we do view the property, we'll put videos up. If we don't, we'll let the investor go off and do their research on the property. When they view the property does that make sense so the vendor actually sent me all the pictures via whatsapp and he clarified that that was a true reflection of the property on the day that they sent us the pictures now jade says how do you get exclusivity with a state agent if you have no experience now jade believe it or not people think that this is actually quite hard now i had two mentees that said to me at oh, okay, was we're dealing with an estate agent and they won't give us exclusivity now, I picked up the phone to that agent and within five minutes, 
We've got it removed off right move. We've got it removed off right move. And that is simply by telling them that we, you know, we had found a purchaser for it, but before we put it forward to our purchaser, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't visible online. Does that make sense, Jade? Right, okay. So uh, Tierney says, I'm only 19, but I am very mature. However, I sometimes find that people won't generally take me seriously due to my age. Do you say that deal trading is something that you generally need to be old in order to be more successful? Believe it or not, Tierney, absolutely not, because if anything, I would say, as, as well as a time, you've also got this beautiful thing called technolo uh, technology. Sometimes, you know, with all due respect, if you're a little bit older, you may not be so quick on technology. Um, you you uh, you'll be a lot quicker on technology, so therefore you'll be able to pick it up a lot quicker. The one thing that I, I may just want you to become, uh, Tierney, is a look. Uh, if you, I'd want to make sure that you're confident on the phone and make sure that you're confident on the strategies, the strategies, so that when you speak to the agent, you know exactly what to say. But providing that you're oozing with confidence and providing that you're prepared with technology and being good on the phone, there's no reason why you can't be successful. One of the one of the guys that I started training was actually 16 years old, a chap called Elliot Webb. And you may see him if you he's on one of my testimonial videos. He's now building a multi multi-million pound portfolio, a multi-million pound property portfolio as a result just of deal sourcing. Uh, okay, okay, so Tierney says, I, I used to work in recruitment, so I'm very confident on the phone. Absolutely, fantastic. You're, you're in a fantastic position. If you're good on the phone, you're in a fantastic position. Uh, okay, so straight away, is, is it possible to raise funds for compliance by selling the lead? Uh, in, technically speaking, Ricky, if I'm going to give you the letter of the law, you should be you should be compliant before you even approach the vendor or even trying to market the property to an investor. So the technical and the correct answer to the uh, to the question that you raised is no. Uh, if you were to raise, if you were to go and view a property and try and sell it to an investor without being compliant, you are going against the grain. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, so let's keep let's keep moving on. So. Can I also tell us Tesla about what I said that I cannot plan the property trend calls or when they do uh, is it correct? Okay, so Margaret's asked a question about whether she can claim some of the uh, on the tax returns about some of the training that she's doing. Uh, some people say, well, my accountant says yes. Uh, my account, uh, one of the guys that I always recommend is a chap called Simon Masevich, who is part of Optimize Accountants. They are property property tax specialist and they will confirm that as a result of your training or result of any workshops that you go on you can claim that as a legitimate business expense so okay so let's keep moving on um, okay so Chris says would you offer managing the properties your investors buy off you for an additional income yes you can do that Chris and you can actually build up quite a decent property portfolio as a letting agency but again are you going to source all the properties in your local vicinity. So, Chris, are you going to? Let's just say that you're in Oxford. Are you now only going to? Um, uh, are you only going to uh, start looking for properties in Oxford? Because otherwise, how would you manage? If you're in Oxford and the pro first property that you find is in Birmingham, are you going to be able to manage your property in Birmingham from Oxford? Highly unlikely. If the next property that you look for is going to be in Glasgow. Are you going to now manage one property in Birmingham, one property in Glasgow? Highly unlikely. Do you see where we're going with this? So if they're all in the same area, if they're all in Oxford, fantastic. You can create yourself a lettings business, and as a result, you create yourself another residual income. So, okay. Um, Let's keep moving on. So let's keep going. So, oh, I already have a limited company. Will I be able to do this to? Uh, will I be able to add this to my business? Absolutely. Now, Christine, just so that you know, you want to. Uh, one thing I always say is that keep your trading business 
away from your investment business. And the reason why I say that is that, let's just say absolute worst case scenario. I always look at a worst case scenario. If someone was to try and sue you because something happened in the sourcing business or someone said that it was misrepresented or whatever it may be, so they try and sue you. If there's assets in that business, they've got something to chase. Now with a sourcing business, if you keep the business completely separate and that has no assets because you're not buying any assets in that business, then as a result, um, there's nothing really to chase for. Yeah, as you know, with a limited company, limited risk, limited liability. Does that make sense, Christine? So could we have a list of all the compliance necessary to start was taking notes and miss one? So Chris, just to let you know, okay, so it's the AMLR, which is Anti-Money Laundering Regulation. We've got the ICO, Information Commission Office, and then you can either choose a TPO, which is the Property Ombudsman, or the PRS, which is the Property Redress Scheme. And then finally, you need a public indemnity insurance. So hopefully, they're the four main. So hopefully, um, Frank says, can I put up a slide with all the compliance stuff? Or if you want, I'll, I'll give you my details so that you can ask any questions at the end. Okay, so Rohan has asked an interesting question. He goes, how do I build my investor list? All well and good sourcing deals, but who do I sell these onto? Now, Rohan, that's a fantastic question. Reason why I say that is because it is very true. You can have all the deals in the world, but if you've got no one to sell them onto, your deals are worthless. So that's why you have to do two things. You have to not only source, but in the meanwhile, you have to still keep going to networking events. You still have to keep going out there and putting your name out there, telling people that you've got fantastic deals. Alternatively, you could sell them through to my database, and we do them on a JV basis. Um, but that is something that is only available to people on the Elite Property Tribe. So that's something that we'll discuss later on. But you do need your deals without an investor database is pointless. Your investor database without any deals, again, is pointless. It is a double-edged sword. So Jackie says, how do you secure deals with agents without proof of funds? Now, Jackie, just so that you know, if you're speaking to an agent about proof of funds, you've already told them the wrong things. And the reason why I say that is very simple. You've already told them that you're the buyer. Now, if the estate agent knows that you're not the buyer, they won't be asking you for proof of funds because they know that it's not you buying the property. Does that make sense? Um, does that make sense? So in that respect, you don't go to an agent and said, uh, you don't go to an agent and say, I'm going to buy the property, I'm going to cash buy, I'm going to complete within seven days, etc. because you're not. And the moment that you start loaning to an estate agent is the moment that they stop calling you. So just make that very, very clear. Okay, so keep moving on. So Manito says, would you call rent-to-rent -rent properties assets? They are assets to your business, but they're not assets to you because you don't own them. You know, you can clearly show, uh, you can clearly show uh, to someone that's trying to sue you that you don't own those assets by the, by the, by the, uh, by showing them the agreement that you've got. So yes. Uh, so yeah. You can, you can do deal sourcing and uh, rent to rent in the same business. So, so Kerry says, so what do you say to an agent? So, so, okay, this is very straightforward, Kerry. You go to the agent and say, guys, okay, I've seen that you've got this property. The reason why I'm contacting you is very simple. I'll be, I've got someone that may be interested in this property. Just so you know, I'm not the buyer, but I've got an interested party. And as a result, if I'm able to show the property to the buyer, where we can get it removed from all the portals so that we don't call it exclusivity or we just ask for a level of exclusivity. Now, if you go off and start asking for a week or two weeks from day one without building rapport, the agent's gonna say, sorry, no chance. But if you ask them for maybe a day, 24 to 48 hours, they may prepare to do that for you, depending on how you come across. And as a result, you'll see how many agents will actually start working with you because let's face it, you're doing the hard work for them. You're selling the property for them. All they're doing is sitting on their backside and waiting for you to show them the buyer. Off the back of that, they then take the buyer through the whole buying process as they would normally. Does that make sense? 
So you're doing, you've got to reiterate to them that an actual fact, yes, they're taking it off right move, but you're going to be helping them by taking, finding them a buyer, they're not going to have to worry about anything else. They're not going to have to do like 10 or 20 viewings on the property. The person that's going to come forward is hopefully going to like the property because you're going to present it in the correct manner. Off the back of that, they're then going to go through and view the property through the agent. The agent is then going to take them through their sales progression as they normally would. Off the back of that, they're then going to do the deal and the agents now sold the property. Their agent looks like a hero in, in the eyes of a vendor. The vendor doesn't know that you exist. And to be fair, you don't need to really know who the vendor is. Let the agent deal with that. And then off the back of that, the investors bought a property. The agents made their commission. You've made their, your commission. Everyone's happy. The vendor's happy. The agent's happy. The investor's happy. You're happy. Everyone moves forward. Does that make sense? Julian has said, if our property is on with an agent and you said that you can get it taken off right move before you show it to the investor, how do you fix the price? Okay. I would have thought that an agent would not go to their vendor and ask them to sign an option agreement, especially want to keep it on to anyone else but to buy. Okay, so Julian, put yourself in the former in the feet of an eight or in the shoes of an agent just for now. Just imagine they've been trying to sell that property for the last three months, but they've had no takers. Now you come along and you say that you've got a potential buyer for it, but off the back of that, you would have done your due diligence and on the basis that you believe it's a financial deal. So let's just say it's on the market for, let's say 150. 150, 300, you decide whatever figure it may be. And then you go in and you say, well, I may have a purchaser, but the figure, I've worked out all the figures, the figure that we could potentially get an investor in on is, let's say 120. Uh, now, just out of curiosity, you know, you've spoken to the vendor a number of times, do you believe that they're going to accept so around the 120 mark? And you'll watch how many agents will say, you know what, to be fair, yes. We had one property in Grimsby uh, a couple of months back where the owner was wanting 135. It was on the market 160. What, uh, we agreed 135. And then as a result, we managed to further agree it down to 118. So vendors, they're not as hard to negotiate as you think. It's normally the agent, which is driving the price and the reason why they're driving the price is very simple they work on a commission basis the more they achieve the more commission they generate so there's lots of uh so there's lots of things that you have to take into consideration uh okay so Krista, i had an agent ask for proof of funds and some details on the investors before a viewing is that normal yes but you've not presented it in the correct manner hence why they've asked you for that um so let's keep moving on let's there's so many questions what value add are we looking for with hmos in article 4 area so just so you know um sorry it's e ahmed okay so what value are you adding to remember with a hmo that's in an article 4 area it's already got lots of added value added to it the fact that you can't go off and just create a new hmo without the use of without the need of planning permission, the fact that you've already got one, the fact that they are in short supply now, the fact that it's, it may already be income generating. There's lots of things that you can add in the Article 4 areas. Um, so don't let that put you off. Is it possible to raise funds? For, all right, so we've already, we've already answered that question. Um, okay, so Annie has asked a question. Is it usually usually acceptable to rent to rent landlords for the person who takes on the deal for HMO properties for them to hand the property to a HMO agent? Absolutely. You don't have to, just because you take the property on, doesn't mean do you have to, you uh, doesn't mean that you have to run it. You can give it to an agent to manage it on your behalf. So Lisa's asked, do you charge the vendor if you sell their property or do you charge the investor? Okay, so Lisa, this is a good question because do I, if, especially if there's an agent involved, you let the agent charge the vendor as they would normally, and then you charge the investor. I always load my charges onto the investor as opposed to the vendor because that way it makes getting deals on your books a lot easier. If a vendor knows that it's not costing them anything to sell through you as a network, deals will be coming through you left, right, and center. 
Uh, okay, so let's keep. If you are fires to the vendor, sorry, I don't understand the question, Lisa. How do you find direct to vendor service accommodation deals? Okay, that's a straightforward one. You know, uh, finding a service accommodation deals, basically, all you've got to do is find a block of flats. Now, there's loads of ways that you can find blocks of flats. You can find management, uh, you can find management companies, you can find letting agents, you can also find freeholders and find out who the leaseholders are. So there's so many ways that you can do that. So, you know, there's so many ways uh, to do that. You know, technically speaking, you can go on Rightmove and find all the properties that are on there for one and two bedroom flats, and let's just say in Leeds. Off the back of that, you then can find out who the freeholder of the building is, who will then, technically speaking, be able to give you information on who the leaseholder is. So Lisa says, would you charge the vendor anything if you were direct? So if you wanted to charge them a commission, you can do. I've never really done it personally because I'd rather have the deal for them to, if I'm an R about a fee, uh, I'd rather make the money directly from the investor. So it all depends. Um, okay, so Lisa says, do you charge VAT on your 3 or 5K or do you add the VAT in? It depends on what you want to do. We sometimes add it in, we sometimes add it on top. Um, okay. I think I've answered pretty much all the questions. Okay, deal is where you can success, right, okay. I would like to approach agents. How do you structure deal when you're, de uh, when you're dealing? Okay, how many sources operate nationwide? Okay, so I don't know the answer to that one. I don't know how many sources there are that are operating nationwide. But believe it or not, the ones that I know, the ones that I know that I'm dealing with are very, very good. So in that respect, it's not a crowded market. There are so many deals out there. Just so that you know, if you were to only, I'm going to quickly do the maths for you. If you were to only, uh, if you were to only deal with auction, an auction house, so let's just treat one in Birmingham. There's one auction house in Birmingham. They get 100 properties a month, times that by 12. That's 1,200 properties a year that they get. Now, out of that, there'll be 30% of those. So out of 100 properties, 30 minus 30, 30% uh, 30 of those will be local authorities. Take out another 30% for properties where vendors will want to go into the room or they'll sell. That leaves you with 40 properties. Times that by 12, straight away, you've got near enough the best part, 500 properties that you can deal with just with that one agent just with that one agent. Now, if you think that there's multiple hundreds of auctions happening all around the country, and that's, um, you know, that's pretty much, that could see you for life. You wouldn't need to go anywhere. You wouldn't need to work with uh, any estate agent. You wouldn't need to work directly to vendor. Straight away, you could have multiple hundreds of deals straight away. Does that make sense? Okay, how big is how big a deal is it to set up a limited company? Straightforward, it can take you 10 minutes and it'll charge you 35 pounds if you do it all online yourself, or you can just give it all to a accountant and they'll be doing it'll be done straight away. Um, okay. So let's keep let's keep moving on. Okay, Andy T says, how do you deal with the question of your experience from the vendor or estate agents when you're just starting out? Now you've got to remember, Andy, is that at some point, you're going to have to, especially when you're starting out, you're going to have to make yourself sound a lot bigger than what you are. So if you're a one-man band, uh, one-man band, there's lots of ways that you can do it. You can, use, you can outsource a lot of things. So you can use uh, your website. Lots of one-man bands have got fantastic websites. They've got service offices uh, acting as their address. They've also got a... A PA service that's acting for them, taking all the calls. So, you know, in that respect, if an agent were to call you and is to go through your PA, sorry, Andy's just on the other line at the moment. Can I take a message and I'll get to call you back? Uh, straight away, you know, for that's what that's where you've got to look at it. There are lots of services out there that will enhance your that will enhance you and what your company do. Does that make sense? So let's keep moving on. Right. So one thing I wanted to share 
with you this evening is four guys. And I, I spoke about these over the last few weeks. So we've got Dami, we've got Michael, we've got Kazim, and we've got Ashley. Now, these are four young guys. So these guys are based in London. This guy is based in Dubai. Uh, Ashley is based in Birmingham. So they're spread pretty much all over the country. And what they're, they're, the only thing that matches them all together is their ability to do deals. Does that make sense? So I'm going to show you that these two guys in the middle here, they're actually business partners. And as a result, between them, they're near enough to the best part of 50, uh, so seven and seven and another one, best part of 15 properties between them. And that's since June this year. You know, we've got Danny on the left-hand side who's done multiple deals by himself whilst living in Dubai. So he's built a rent-to-rent -rent portfolio of HMOs himself. He's got some service accommodation units and he's based in Dubai. He came and spent a day with me in the office a couple of weeks ago. And we've got Ashley Walker on the right-hand side that's done multiple rent-to-rent -rent deals and also has taken a property on, on a no-money-down deal. And I'll talk you through that in a second. So you guys do the maths. So we did 483 deals in 2017 at the average fee of £4,000, which gave us an average of around 1.9 million with no capital inlay or no capital input to any deal. We simply went back and we sourced, we packaged and we sold it. Now in 2018, we slowed down slightly because we slowed down, we did less deals but we increased the sourcing fee. So we did 358 deals, and off the back of that, we turned around 2.15 million. Again, no capital input into deals. We sourced, we packaged, and we sold. And then here's some of the deals that you'll see. So here's one deal that a guy from, uh, the guy's actually based in Dubai, uh, sorry, Saudi Arabia, and he actually found this deal, and it, the property was actually in Blackpool. It was through an auction house, and he, we agreed the deal at 60 grand, 50% below market value. And as a result, uh, you know, we result it sold, and we could have had easily 20, 10, 20, 30 people that wanted that deal. Here's another property through guys called Martin and Elliot Webb, Manchester Road, which is in Bolton. And that's a nine bed HMO, uh, eight bed HMO with planning for the ninth route. So, Here's another one. So these are deals in 2018. You would have seen the amount of deals that are coming out over the last couple of weeks. On average, we're doing around two a day. And here's a property that was in Stockfield Road. So this is a rent-to-rent -rent deal in Birmingham. This is actually Ashley's deal, Ashley Walker's deal. So we're on target to hit 500 deals uh, in in 2019 so this year we want to turn over so around 2.5 million pounds with no capital import into any deal and 2020 i've got massive massive goals that i want to hit circa a thousand deals plus but the average fee is circa around five thousand and again it's a massive target to have a thousand deals over 365 days it's equivalent to near enough three deals three deals a day which is a hell of a lot to do, a hell of a lot, but we've got plans in place to make that happen. Have you ever heard of the saying from, um, from this gentleman here? You are what you do, not what you say you'll do. So going back to the beliefs and actions again, your actions, if you say that you're gonna do something, make sure that you do do it and not just talk about it. There's two pe kinds of people in this world. There's doers and there's talkers. If you're a talker, you'll never get around to doing it. If you're a doer, you'll just crack on and get it done. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so we'll, there's a couple of questions coming through. I'll answer them right at the end. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention, in order to get involved in the 30 Deals in 30 Day Challenge, it is we've set up a program, and I've been running this program for the last few years. We're going to close it towards the, uh, well, we're going to say towards the end of this week. It is called the Elite Property Tribe. And what the Elite Property Tribe is a training program, which is a 52 week program of online training. When we say online training, it is all live. So it's not all recorded stuff, it's all live stuff, where we show you the six main cash flow strategies, deal trading, rent to rent, lease options, HMO, service accommodation, and commercial to residential. And what I do is I give you everything that you need to succeed in each of the six cash flow strategies. 
all the contracts, all the checklists, all the profit calculator spreadsheets, and all the proven sourcing templates. So everything that you've got, and I'm there to handhold you through the whole process. I want to make sure that everything that you do is stuff that you, uh, everything that you do is the stuff that I've told you to do, and I want you to follow it, the steps, and what I say to the T, because I've done this for a number of years. I've done this for 18 years, and as a result, you know, I've perfected the pitch, and I've perfected it to a point where pretty much everything that we look at is a deal. Now, just so you know, for 2019, we've built a new platform and we've got a new program for the EPT. We're going to give everyone a learning journal, a learning journal, which is within that year, I want everyone to be able to call, uh, literally, I can call anyone at any point and say, guys, let me have a look at your learning journal and I'll be able to see where you are, what deals you looked at, what, how many webinars you've watched, what notes you've taken off the webinars, how many people you've called, what the numbers were, and what the action points were for. So uh, what the action points were for that week. And I, I will see, basically, I'm trying to get you guys to become accountable to me. So that at any point, I can look at your journal and say, God, it's a little, like a little bit of being back at school. Let me have a look at your homework book. But your homework book here has to be full of action. So if at the start of that week you said, this week I'm going to call 30 people, and out of 30 people, I want five deals. At the end of that week, we're going to see the numbers of all the 30 people, all the conversations that you've had, and the notes that you've made of all those 30 calls, and what's actually transpired as a result of those 30 calls. Does that make sense? So as well as that, we're also going to be holding a two-day intensive. So when anyone starts the program, I've never done this before, by the way, before we've just gone through the whole program the 52 week program and sometimes it may be that it's taken us until week four to try and get you all on board now what we're doing is that from the 4th of february yes you will have some webinars but on saturday the 16th and 17th i expect all ept members to be in attendance and then as a result i will be going through all the strategies in great detail so that you understand them from day one so that when you're speaking to an agent, now Tiani, you said that you weren't, uh, you may not know some, some of the strategies. <clears throat> By the end of the two days, you will know those strategies. The location is at the Jury's in Broad Street in Birmingham. The times are nine to five, only for EPT members. And we'll be going through what the, an EPT member looks like. So making sure that you understand the three main strategies, making sure that you understand how, you can, uh, how they can be used to source property and how you can add value. We'll be looking at all the platforms and the various sourcing techniques. We'll be looking at the packaging techniques and so much more. And then the next EPT live meet, which we'll be talking about in a second, is Saturday the 9th of March. We have four live meets. So we've got the two-day intensive in February. We've got four live meets throughout the year where we have keynote speakers talking to us about different strategies. So the last one we had, we had someone talking to us about developments, and we had another person talking to us about tax advice and another person talking to us about deal sourcing tactics. So the beautiful thing about the Elite Property Tribe is that I'm holding you accountable because I'm always on the end of the phone. You'll have my personal mobile number. Anytime you run into a roadblock, you pick up the phone to me. And at the start, you'll be given a 52-week learning journal for 2019 for you to write down all your tasks and the outcome. And you'll be allocated an EPT buddy for daily accountability. So every Monday between 7 and 9 p.m., we'll be holding weekly training and a Q&A webinar for a whole year. You'll have access to a platform called Elite Property Tribe, which is www.elitepropertytribe.co.uk, where all the webinar recordings will be stored just in case you miss, uh, miss one of the sessions. One of the beautiful things about the Elite Property Tribe is that I'm very, very generous with my time. When I say that, is that it gives you the opportunity to come and shadow me and spend the day with me in my office. Now, at any time, we always, you know, we normally have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday days where we have people in the office. Now, here was one of the guys, Kurum. Now, he came in on Thursday, the uh, 3rd of January. He's only just started, well, his program hasn't started yet uh, because it, he's joined on the 4th of uh, February. 
So he starts on the fourth of Feb. He's got no deal sourcing or deal trading experience. And within the day, we found a four bedroom house in Liverpool and he actually negotiated on six properties as a lease option in Doncaster, all from my office with clear guidance. So where he was sat there, I was sat opposite him. I was listening to his phone calls. I was listening to the questions and I was then saying, you know what, Kuru, the next phone call, the next phone call, this is what I want you to say. And as a result, we've made it pitch perfect by the end of the day. Normally, a cost of a one-on-one -on -one day with me is one and a half thousand pounds. But as part of the Elite Property Tribe, you get that so that you can book as many days with me as you want. And here was Dammy. He came and spent a, couple, a day with me on Thursday, the 10th of January. And he really enjoyed it. He really, really enjoyed it. He flew all the way over from Dubai to spend the day with me. Now, like I said, as part of the UPT, we have quarterly meetups, live quarterly, uh, quarterly meetups. You get access to all my proven leaflets, magazine adverts and letters. You get to JV with me so that you can sell your deals to my database, which consists of over 100,000 property investors who are hungry for your deals. You get access to my power team, which consists of architects, accountants, lawyers, mortgage brokers, builders, etc. And you get to join the thriving WhatsApp uh, supportive community of property investors that are in a similar situation to you and that are determined to change their life. And they will inspire you with their success and share their experiences so that you can avoid costly mistakes and shortcut your success. So we'll be talking about what to never tell an investor about the property until that they actually paid your fee or risk being cut out of the process. There's one of the questions about being cut out. So we'll answer that in a second. And how to build a lasting relationship with investors so that they become repeat customers. So here's part of the 52 week agenda. So we look at rent to rent, we look at lease options, we look at all the terms. You can see here, we go through different types of HMOs, the different types of cash flow models, commercial and bricks and mortar value, strategic financing, rent to rent. We look at rent to rent calculators, we look at how to negotiate direct to landlord, we look at how to deal with direct with agents. We look at the paperwork side of it. We look at the compliance side of it. We look at the advertising side of it. So from the 4th of February, I'm going to be throwing all EPT members directly in at the deep end. And as a result, to be part of the 30 deals in 30 days, you have to be a member of the Elite Property Tribe. So the, what is the cost of it? So just so you know, guys, don't switch off right, right now because the whole program costs £6,000. However, you only pay 3,000 up front. The other 3,000 is paid once you become successful or once you succeed. So there is a payment where you can pay one lump sum of 3,000 up front, or you can pay over the three payment period. And if you join the EPT, it actually costs you, it actually you don't risk anything because you're covered by my 30 day money back guarantee. And here's how it works. If you join the EPT and you participate in all the weekly webinars, if for whatever reason, if you aren't completely satisfied after 30 days, you send me an email and I'll give you a full refund. No questions asked, no hassles or forms to fill out, no problems at all. So if you wanted to know a little bit more about the EPT, you can go to bit.ly forward slash EPT 2019. The first webinar starts on Monday the 4th of February. We've still got a lot of questions to answer, by the way. Now, here's some of the questions that I ask. Now, here's some of the questions that some people are, uh, will, answer, uh, will ask me. It won't work in my area. Now, I'm going to introduce you to a person in a minute. You can source property across the entire country from the comfort of your sofa. What makes you think you can't source property just because it's a couple of hours drive away? Remember, when you deal source through estate agents and auctions, you don't need to view the property. When you source five types of deals, you'll see daily opportunities in every town or city. Some people say, well, I don't have enough time for this. But the question that I've got to ask is that you'll be amazed at how much you can achieve when you actually know what you need to do and how to do it. You know, even if you spend an hour a day, you'll see how many deals flow through your desk. And as a result, how many deals you'll actually get to do. 
If you sacrifice, if you sacrifice one day from your weekend, then you can build a very decent deal trading business. Even if you did one deal a week, that's equivalent to, or even if you did one deal a month and the fee of that deal was five grand, that's an equivalent of 60 grand a year. So I'm not saying that you have to work 80 hours a week to do this. I'm not saying that you have to dedicate all your time to it. Even if you did one hour a week, you could find sufficient deals in there to make a very sustainable income. All I ask from you is that you follow the proven system and don't waste any time because the system is proven to work. You don't need any experience. All you need is a proven system with consistent action. Consistent action is the key word there because if you don't make the calls, you're not going to get the deals. If you can sacrifice, just like I said, one day from your weekend or one hour an evening, you can actually make one deal a month, which is equivalent to 60 grand a year. Now, just so you know, I put this guy up, and I, I mention this guy in most webinars because he is a real inspiration. Now, Rahil is actually a procurement engineer, and he lives in Saudi Arabia. He's an expat working abroad. He earns a decent salary but that's due to the antisocial nature of the work, being in a foreign country away from his extended family and uh, friends. He works 12 hours a day, six days a week. Now working 72 hours a week, it's fair to say that he doesn't have a lot of time. His wife and two kids are with him in Saudi Arabia, so he also needs to make time for them and also time to build a UK-based property business. Now he started with me in January in 2017, I believe it was. And in three months, he traded 15 deals and made in excess of 15 grand in sourcing fees. Every deal he found was listed with an estate agent and was found online. Now, because Rahil is based in Saudi Arabia, he physically can't view any properties, but yet he did 15 deals. He's a phenomenal young man. He looks for deals across the entire country. And his viewpoint is very simple. He isn't going to live in them. He isn't going to view them. So why limit your search to your investment area? And this is what I'm saying to you about the fish and the pond. Sorry, about the pond and the sea. He searched the entire country. He focused on one region or county for a week before moving on to another area. And he systematically worked his way through the different regions. And he repeated it once he did cover the entire country. Remember, even if you dealt with auction houses, you could go through the whole country and then go back on. Now, if you're jailing with me, you've got the ability to find a buyer quickly, which means that all you need to do is source a deal and let me take the care of the rest for you. Now, the reason why I like deal sourcing is because there are no tenants. There's no ongoing management of properties or tenants. So if you mess up on one deal, don't worry about it because you'll learn from the experience and move on to the next. You won't lose money by making a mistake. You will lose money by being paralyzed by fear. When I say paralyzed by fear, by not doing it. You will lose money by not doing this. You will only lose money by not taking action. Does that make sense? Now, here's going back to one of the questions. I can't negotiate with vendors. Is it can't or you don't want to? Because I'll show you exactly how to do this. Every, web, every webinar I make almost like a live call just off the cuff. And you'll see me how I do this live on many webinars and live meets. And I don't believe there's any such thing as a script. All I want you to do is feel free just to have a conversation. And when we start to put in some of the cue points as to what are the questions you should be asking or where you should be getting to to get the answers to these questions, you'll realize how easy it is. Then you can source all your deals through estate agents if that's what you want to do, or vendors direct. The life you want lies just at the edge of your comfort zone, and I'll show you exactly what you need to do to succeed, but you have to be willing to try. Now, the one thing that I say are the key characteristics for anyone to succeed is that you have to be smart, you have to be hungry, and you have to be motivated. If you want property cash flow, then this is definitely for you. If you're looking for the fastest way to turn hard cash 
hard working to cash, then this is for you. Now, this lady here is phenomenal and she will not let me off the hook. I'm hoping that she's online actually, but I won't bring her online, but um, let's actually have a look. She is online. So sorry, Deborah, I stole the picture off your Facebook by the way. So uh, Deborah joined the Elite Property Tribe a couple of days back, uh, just over two weeks ago, and she has not stopped. She has not stopped. Um, she joined the EPT in Jan 2019, two weeks ago, two weeks before the program actually starts. The program hasn't started yet. It starts next Monday, a week on Monday. Uh, she's actually found a deal already. Do you see the property that went out in Croydon earlier this week? That's actually Deborah's deal. And as a result, we charge this £6,000 fee on that. Now, on the basis that that goes through to completion, that pretty much is paid for her education. And she's got a number of different deals that's going through. So here's Ashley that we talked about. Now, Ashley joined a year ago in Fed. He's traded three rent-to-rent -rent deals. You can see them in Wolverhampton, Birmingham, and Coventry. Ashley's based in Birmingham, so he's decided to stay a little bit local to him. But he managed to also, with the key thing here, he's got a very young family as well. And Ashley has got his own buy to let, no money down for his future. We structured that with my power team so that we got him a deal, no money down. Now, chap on the left-hand side is a chap called Russell Bokes. Russell has been with me for nearly two years now, and he's been with me for two years because he's such a great success. He trades deals, and his only strategy is auction houses. He doesn't want to deal direct to vendors. He doesn't want to deal directly with agents. He only deals with auction houses, and he gets exclusive to them. And more importantly, he does this all whilst living in Marbella. Originally, he was from Newcastle. He moved over to Marbella, and he's done in excess of 20 plus deals. And in January alone, he's done two deals. So the question is, can you do this? Are any of the people that we've spoken about today any different to you? Absolutely not. All they've done, they put their doubts along aside for long enough to give it a try to no risk to them at all. They've achieved unbelievable results in just one month and results that have been able to replicate month after month. Now, here's the day that you're going to be looking forward to, the day that you have to worry and not imagine never having to do a day's work for anyone else. No more boss, no more commuting, no more pressures. And the one thing that I really like about deal sourcing is that imagine having a business that fits around your family. Commitment so that you never have to miss your kids' plays, concerts or sports matches. I, uh, I'm very much a family man. I make sure that I attend all the kids' plays, all the sessions, you know, whether it's assemblies, Christmas assemblies, sports days, I'm at all of them. That's because my work or everything that I've created works around that. Remember, guys, so just so you know, it, what I'm giving you is a proven system, weekly training every, uh, every week for the whole year, access to my power team, you get the access to the WhatsApp group, the Facebook group, the property platform, as well as the shadowing days and the two-day intensive. And you can join for £3,000, which is your first payment, which can either be one payment or three individual payments. And you go to that link there, and it is on a 100% money-back guarantee. So... Uh, let's have a quick, let's just have a quick roundup and then we're going to start asking and answering the questions. So you get access to the portal, you get to JV with me. Sorry, I should say that's one of the biggest things is that you get to JV with me and you get access to the private group, you get access to the WhatsApp group and you get the quarterly meetings, you get access to my power team too. And there's, uh, there's a bit of evidence about uh, the WhatsApp group that we've got going through. Uh, and then there's a platform that you see. Uh, you'll see that we've got the webinars on there. You see in the recent updates the webinars that we've had previously, and you get all the documents and everything, which is all on the platform. On the platform, we also have access to my flow charts, and these are my flow charts, which you, you get so that you can follow on a step by step process. Uh, for estate agents, vendors, uh, we've got some for direct to. Uh, vendors agents we've got rent to rents and we've got another one which i can't remember for the life of me now so that kind of brings us right let's quickly leave you there so you've got the link at the bottom there 
if you want to if you want to go through to that and have a more re have a read up on uh, the Elite Property Tribe, or you can go to elitepropertytribe.co.uk. Uh, right. So let's go through some of the questions. So Jordan Wilcox says, "Hi, hi, Jordan. Right. Okay. What is the best way to offer and secure a deal through an agent when you always intend on selling it on?" Now, uh, Jordan, I think I've already uh, answered this quite a few times this evening. Uh, remember, you're not selling the, you're not buying the property, so you tell them that you're not the buyer, and you, what you simply say to them is, "Guys, okay, um, I'm not the buyer, but I'm going to find you a buyer. As a result, you'll still make your money from the seller as you would normally. We don't need to know who the seller is. The seller doesn't need, need to know who they are. As far as we're concerned, as far as they're concerned, the agent has found them a buyer. Off the back of that, the agent looks like the good guys." Uh, we've made a, we've made some money off a deal that of a property that we don't own. The investors bought a fantastic deal. The vendor has sold their property, and the agent has made a commission for very little work. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, so here we go. So Ian e. says the deal in London. Did she simply just offer twenty percent below market value and got lucky, or was there a strategy behind it? No, there was actually a strategy behind it. Believe it or not, there's actually a strategy behind it. So she bought the property to me, and I said, "Okay, this is what this is what it is, and this is how we can structure it." We really, with that one, we understood what the vendor's details, what the vendor's details were all about. Well, he's got a certain um, there's a certain criteria is what the vendor required in order to make the deal happen. And so one thing that I said at the very start of the uh, webinar is that we are problem solvers. So in that respect, we found the solution to his problem, which suited his requirements, and it all worked very well. So, okay, how from auction house? Where does he find the money? Where does he find the money for it? But at least he's not bought the property. All we've done is we've packaged it and sold it in exactly the same format as we do with the estate agents. The auction house still makes the money off the seller, and um, we make our money off the buyer, and it works from there. Okay, so Jade says, do we need to be compliant to JV with you? Jade, just for the record, you would still need to be compliant because if you're negotiating directly with uh, state agents and auction uh, and vendors, etc., you're marketing as if you're looking for deals or you're speaking to people as if you're looking for deals. Part of the Estate Agency Act is that you, in essence, you're acting as an agent in that respect, so you wouldn't need to be compliant. So, but I am fully compliant, by the way, guys. Um, okay, so let's keep moving on. Can you please recommend a basic, straightforward, simple CRM system? So there's loads out there. So uh, there are absolutely loads out there. There's Basecamp, there's Asana, there's uh, less, I can't remember what it's called, less annoying. Um, all depends on what you, what really works for you, Martin. Unfortunately, I can't, I can't personally. I'm not a big fan of those. I like to have everything on spreadsheet base. And that's me being a little bit old school. So I still work off spreadsheets. Uh, so are, pr are there any questions? Um, are you still able to make money whilst you're completing the training course? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely, Tierney, because I want you to be making money whilst completing, completing the training course. I want you to be making money within the first 30 days. That's why I put the 30 deals in 30 days challenge out there because you guys, as part of EPT members, hopefully will be going off doing deals, off the back of doing deals. Uh, you would have paid for your workshop, you would have paid for your, um, you would have paid for your deal, you would have paid for your work, uh, sorry, you would have paid for your calls before the, the first 30 months are up. So yes, it is definitely doable. Okay, so how many days in your office do people need to get this? So what's the most it has taken? So uh, Julian, I'm hoping by the end of the weekend of the 16th and 17th, everyone will know what we need to do. We've got the whole, we've got all the webinars. Uh, you've also, on top of that, Julian, the one thing that I forgot to say is that on the platform, let me just quickly show you here, on the platform there, where it says webinars, You've got all the webinars from 2016, 2017, 2018. So, so you've got the best part of 300 webinars that you could binge on. It's almost like Netflix. You could go and watch 
multiple webinars. So let's just say, for argument's sake, if you said you only wanted to deal with rent to rent, you could go and watch all the rent to rent webinars for the last three years. You could go and watch all the service combination webinars for the last three years. Go and watch all the lease option webinars for the last three years. And within the space of a couple of hours, you'll know everything that you need to know about those strategies. So, you know, technically speaking, depending on how much time you've got, you could be up to speed pretty much by the end of this week. Does that make sense? What do you actually have to do to package a deal? So, <clears throat> for doing it, okay, so Julian, sorry, he said there's no substitute for doing it with you, that actually speaking to people is the key. I agree with that, Julian. So, by all means, you know, with uh, you tell me what you'd have to do. You'd have to tell me what days you could come into the office and I'd accommodate those for you. So we've never not been able to accommodate people in the office. It's only if I've got meetings that I need to be in. There's no point you coming into uh, coming in for the day and I'm not being there because I'm in meetings. But I always make sure that we accommodate for EPT members. So uh, Bob says, what do you actually have to do to package deals? So Bob, what you have to do, you have to find a property and you have to pretty much find the angle as to how you can add value to that property in order for it to be seen as decent value for an investor to want to say, you know what, I like that, I like what they've done there. So when you see, for a moment, so when you see a deal, uh, let's just say that it's a house and you say that it's in a great area for potential, <coughs> for potential HMO or potential service accommodation or as potential for development opportunity, that's the things that we're looking out for. So how can we really add value to it? Uh, okay, so Christine says, though you find deals and find investors, payments will only be paid after completion of the property or are payments made before completion? Christine, just so you know, just imagine that you, uh, you saw one of my properties. What we tend to do is we say to the person, uh, we say to the person that before they go and view the property, they have to reserve the property with, with us, which is by paying the finance fee. Uh, on the email, so let's just say that's 5,000. Uh, so that is then held with us. With me in particular, anything that I hold is fully refundable right up to the point of exchange of contracts. That's why people like doing business with me uh, because we don't hold on to anyone's money, we don't run away with people's money. I've been doing this for 18 years. People can see that I'm, uh, I've got a very good background and a history in this business, and then as a result. Uh, yeah, we we do keep so we get paid so the funds are held in our account so that we know that we can't get cut out of the centre. That's the reason why we take that money up front so that we can't be cut out of the centre. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, I think she's come back. Okay, that makes sense. It shows morals and honesty. Okay, so what is the difference between service combination house or HMO house? Okay, question. Uh, at least the difference between SA and HMO is that with an SA, with a service combination, they would stop there for potentially the night, if not a couple of nights. With a HMO, generally speaking, the people that stop in service combination units, they will have a house or their main residence somewhere else, whereas with a HMO, the person living in that room will potentially be using that property as their sole residence. Does that make sense? Um, Okay, so Chris says, do you take the fee straight away from the investor or once they complete? You can do it either way. You know, we've got agreements in there where they can pay you on exchange or on completion or you can take it up front. I always take it up front because that shows me that the person that you're dealing with, um, the person that you're dealing with is committed to, committed to the property and is not a tire kicker. So Jackie says, do all the deals you post sell. Pretty much, Jackie, there's the odd one or two that doesn't sell. But if it doesn't sell, we then use that as our um, as our bargaining tool to go back to the, either the agent or the vendor and tell them that we put it out to 100,000 people and it didn't sell. So we use that as a negotiation tool to go and renegotiate the deal. How do you determine which one is best then for the investor? What we tend to do, I've got spreadsheets where it's pretty much a yes or no. You know, when you put the figures through the spreadsheets, they'll either say yes or no. And so there's certain parameters that investors are after that we've set the spreadsheet to determine yes or no. So once you put the figures in, they'll either say yes or no. 
If there's a problem with needing to run HMOs yourself, if you find a rent-to-rent -rent deal as a deal sourcer, would it make sense to keep as many rent-to-rent -rent HMOs deals yourself as a deal sourcer, as it is relevant, as it is re re irrelevant where the deal is? Absolutely. You know, Annie, in that respect, if you source deals, uh, if you source deals and you do them, uh, you know, and you want to keep them, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. You know, you keep whatever you want. So let's just have a quick look. Do you book the viewing before or after you've taken the investor funds? So first, they reserve it with us, which is by paying the finder's fee. After that, we book the viewing because by that point, we know that we can't contact the centre because we're retained in the middle. Um, if we do JV with you, will you pay us on completion? So we only uh, we pay out on exchange. So if the deal exchanges, that means that the investor is committed, legally committed to the property, which means that then the funds can be ex uh, committed. I wouldn't pay them out beforehand just in case the deal falls out. And then I have to come back to you, Kevin, and say, sorry, you have to refund it. If you turned around to me and said, sorry, Arsh, I've already spent it, that could leave everyone in a sticky situation. So uh, it's always done on exchange. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Okay, so if I could send out five good deals per week, could, would we be able to JV on all of them? Manita, absolutely, absolutely, but that is only on the basis that you're an EPT member. So I only, uh, so just so you know, Manita, we can, he says we send out five deals, he goes, because you said you send out two a day. We structure them so that everyone knows when the deals are going out. Does that make sense? So Carl says, do you need certain skills to be a deal sourcer? <clears throat> Basically, can anyone do it or do you have to be a certain person? No, anyone can do it. All you've got to do, Carl, is have the ability to follow, you know, admittedly, I hate saying this but I like this, but follow what I say to a T. If you follow what I say to a T, you will get deals and you will sell deals. Been doing this 18 years. You know, if you work on the basis of the last two years alone, We've done the best part of, yeah, easily a thousand deals, the best part of a thousand deals this year. We're aiming, and just so you know, I'm building a bit of software in the background, which is due to launch this year, which is then going to start to take us to a thousand deals plus a year. Uh, sorry, so Martin says, are you able to distribute to your listeners tonight a spreadsheet for deal sourcing? Uh, unfortunately not, Martin. The, the documents that I have, uh, solely for the members. So the spreadsheet that I've got is, I call it the cash flow calculator. And off that, it will literally, uh, it, that is purely for the people that are on the workshop. So uh, Frank says, if you sell a deal to an investor, uh, on my behalf to a person from abroad, do you do all the checking he has the money or do I? No, so basically, so if you sell to, on my behalf, <coughs> So if you sell a deal to an investor on my behalf, so if it's an investor on my database, I will do all the checks to make sure that he passes all the checks, yes? Um, so that kind of brings us to a close. We've answered a lot of questions, by the way, guys. So we've got uh, the link to, let's have a quick look. Yep, so we've answered pretty much all the questions. Um, <clears throat> So if you are interested and you want to join the EPT, very simply, all you have to do is go to the link at the bottom, which is bit.ly forward slash EPT 2019. Uh, and it will take you through to the payment page. Um, but on that note, I want to say, you know, thank you uh, very much for taking the time to learn the secrets of deal trading. Hope you understand how you can use this system, which is a three-step system to achieve your property cash flow goals. And as always, I always say, if you've got any unanswered questions, please feel free to let me know. You've got my personal mobile number there. I wanna, I'm not one of these people that you can't get hold of on the phone. You know, we've got a very strict call booking system for your team members so that you can definitely get through to me. Uh, and on top of that, we also got my email address and you've got the website there, which is elitepropertytribe.co.uk, which will take you to, um, which will take you to so that you can see some of the testimonials and some of the deals that people have done. And hopefully off the back of that, you'll join the EPT and let's make 2019 a successful year for you. 
But on that note, uh, if there are any questions, feel free to come back to me. But on that note, I wish you all a very successful week ahead. And if there are any questions, feel free to get in contact and let's make good things happen. Take care. Good night. God bless.